You're probably wondering if you could cable something else to the sampling input. After all, this is reason, right? And the answer, of course, is yes. You can cable any audio input into the sampling input, which means that you can sample from within reason. Let me show you that now. I have a Thor bass, and I'm going to create a short bass pattern that I'm going to use to make some samples. So let's get set up for record, and then I will record my patterns. All right, we have a sequence here. I'm going to tidy it up a little bit by selecting it. We'll open up our tools window and quantize it. And let's play it back. I'd like to sample those bass lines so I can play them back at the touch of a key, but I want to add a little grit to it first. So let's add some scream distortion to our bass line. Okay, let's try some things out. Sounds good. Now if we flip the rack over, you will see that the scream is cabled to my mixer. That's how we're hearing it, of course. The Thor goes to the scream, the scream goes to the mixer. But I'm going to move the scream so that it feeds my sampling input. And now I'll turn on the monitor in auto mode, which means it only goes on when I'm sampling. And on the sampling tab, I'll press my sample button and start the playback of my sequence. Well, you can see the waveform over in the sample window. It definitely worked. Let me close the sequencer and get rid of the Thor and the Scream. We don't need those anymore. And let's verify the sample that we just created. Yep, worked perfectly. All right, now what I'm going to do is make three copies of the sample. And we're going to assign a different section of the wave to each one of these samples. So here's my first one. This will be the baseline going up. Select the area I want. Set the sample start and end. That sounds good. I can crop it if I want, but I don't have to since I already set my start and end markers. The second sample will be the same riff, but ending down. Okay, now I have one that's a fourth up. And the last one is up a fifth. So now we have four bass lines, and what I want to do is use a sampler to play them all back from my keyboard. So we will create an NNXT. Let's initialize it. And if I click the browser button from my sample area, on the left I see song samples. And there are the four samples we just recorded. So I'll bring them all in. Let me do some rearranging here. We'll put the up one first, then the fourth, then the fifth, and then the down. So let's make each of these take up a single note, and then I will drag them to different places on the keyboard. We'll make that trigger at G1, the up a fourth at G2, the up a fifth at G3, and the bass line down at G4. 
Now what happens if I play one of these notes? Let's listen. Well, that's not right. I need to set the root key. And I can dial it in or command click on the keyboard. I want the root key to be the same as the zone so that the samples play back at the pitch in which they were recorded. Now remember, these aren't rex files, so they will not respond to tempo changes. And if you extend the zone, they will change pitch, but they will also change tempo. There's a lot you can do by sampling within reason. I hope you will explore internal sampling.